Uh, dear friends, in this video, I am going to talk about PP and PPK, the process performance indices. See, PP and PPK are called the process performance indices. They are otherwise called as the overall capability indices or the long long term capability indices. So I'm going to explain to you about PP and PPK in two videos. And this is part one. Here I will be explaining you what is exactly PP and PPK and how is it different from CP and CPK. And then when should we use PP and PPK and when should we use CP and CPK. So this is my objective in this first video. And after understanding this, I'll take you through my second video where I will be explaining you the calculations behind PP and PPK as well as CP and CPK and let you understand the difference in it. Generally, the capability depends on the process variation. So how do you measure the variation? How do you calculate the variation that decides what do you calculate, right? If you use the overall standard deviation, you have accounted the overall variation. And so if you use overall standard deviation, you will get overall capability. But if you use only you know, the short term variation, which are nothing but the sigma within, sigma between, and then combine the two to get sigma combined, that will give you only short term capability, CP and CPK. So what are these standard deviation? How can we actually calculate these standard deviation? Thereby, we can calculate both CP and CPK as well as PP and PPK. We'll understand that with a simple example so that things will become easier to you. And I'm showing you a process here and see here, this is the process. This is how it is currently performing. And this with respect to the upper specification limit and the lower specification limit. So if you look at the process, the process extremities, or we call it the control limits comes closer to the specification limit. This is not good for your process because your control limit approaching specification limit or, sp or crossing specification limit will pull down its capability. So what is good for uh, your process is your control limits should gradually approach the process center, right? Should gradually approach the process center and not the specification limit. If you move the control limit towards the center and place it well inside the specification limit, you are actually making your process more capable. And that is what you are noticing as difference between this red continuous curve and this green dotted curve. The green dotted curve is more capable, but the red continuous curve is less capable. The reason is variation. This red curve variation is too high. This green dotted curve variation is too less. How can you reduce variation? You can reduce variation by fixing the special causes one by one. If special causes exist in your process, your process is considered to be statistically out of control. If you fix all the special causes, then your process is considered to be statistically in control. So here, the variations are too less. That means you have fixed all the special causes. That means your process is statistically in control with the green curve. However, the red curve, the process is statistically out of control, right? So for the process, which is in statistical control, you can directly calculate CPCPK. 
however for a for a process which is not in a state of statistical control cpcpk should not be calculated because your process is operating with special costs you you must prefer calculating pppk only right so we'll see that and see here capability is actually a function of two things one is the variation in the process another one is the position of the process center with respect to the specification limit if the variation is too high capability will be low if the process is shifted process is off targeted right that will also reduce the capability so this capability can be measured in two ways one is short term capability another one is long term capability how can i conduct my capability study i collect data you no know, over a longer period of time over a longer period of time sufficiently large data i collect why i considered collecting the data over longer period because in the longer term all possible variation will happen and so the data collected over long term will actually capture the long term variation as well as the short term variation right what is that long term variation over a long term the batch to batch variation will be high because of change in the raw material change in the machine setting change in the operator the wear and tear of the machineries there are many other reasons because of which the batch to batch variation will be higher and so if you conduct the study over long term and if you actually capture both short term variation as well as long term variation that means you are interested in capturing the overall variation so calculating the overall variation is very simple you calculate the standard deviation of standard deviation using all the data you have collected because standard deviation is a measure of the variation you use all the data you have collected you no know, for calculating the standard deviation that is called overall standard deviation use this standard deviation in the you no know, formulas of the process performance indices that will give you pp and ppk the long term capabilities however if you conduct the study over a short term you have conducted the study over a short term and uh, even within the short term there will be two types of variation one is called within batch variation another one is between batch variation because we always produce products in batches and so we will take sample from every batch and so the sample taken within a particular batch samples taken within a particular batch will have some variation that can be captured by calculating within standard deviation but the variation between the subgroups right can be captured by calculating the between standard deviation how to calculate this within how to calculate this between standard deviation i will be explaining in the next video and once you have the within standard deviation and between standard deviation you can combine the two and you can get combined standard deviation use this combined standard deviation in your capability indices formula that will give you cp cpk so to be frank the formulas for cp cpk and pp ppk are one and same the difference is in the standard deviation use overall standard deviation in the formula what you are getting is pp ppk use sigma combined in the formula what you are getting is cp and cpk but for always it is always a greater idea to calculate the capability indices only after bringing the process into a state of statistical control if you bring the process into a state of statistical control 
the between batch variation will be negligible right very small or even negligible at that point of time the combined standard deviation will be more or less equal to the within batch standard deviation and so you you can conduct your study over a short term also and use the combined standard deviation and that will give you a realistic values of cp and cpk however if your process is out of control it is not advisable to conduct a study over a short term and it is also not advisable to calculate cp cpk under such scenario so if but you really wanted to understand the capability of your process because that's an important uh, no characteristics you want to understand metric you want to understand your vendors are asking right and so when when you understand your process is not in a state of statistical control you have to you no know, use the overall standard deviation whatever data you have collected put everything in a single column and calculate the standard deviation using all the data points you are getting overall standard deviation use it in your formula and directly get your pp and ppk you understand so pp and ppk are overall capability indices otherwise the overall uh, performance indices the long term you no know, process performance indices however cp and cpk are short term capability indices and you can calculate cp and cpk only when the process is in statistical control otherwise use the overall standard deviation calculate the pp ppk and long term capabilities are always will always be lower than the short term capabilities we this is what we call it you no know, process shift always in a long term process will undergo shift and drift and then you know long term capabilities will be always lower than the short term capabilities only when you, you know uh, remove the sh shift as well as the drift by fixing all the special causes the capability you no know, can be improved and the short term process capability or also known as potential measures of capability and the long term capability indices pp and ppk are also known as actual measures of process performance right and now this is the formula to be used for calculating pp ppk or the same formula cp cpk only thing is in the place of p we will have c right and process performance indices the first one pp is actually a ratio between specification width and process width usl minus lsl divided by 6 sigma and look here in the place of sigma i have put sigma overall then only it is pp so sigma overall how will you calculate square root of summation of x minus x bar the whole square divided by n minus 1 now the formula to calculate the overall standard deviation is revealed you have to use all the data you have collected because with whatever data you have collected the maximum variation will reflect only in the overall standard deviation not in the within standard deviation or not in the between standard deviation or not even in the combined standard deviation so you should not use all those things when you really wanted to understand the overall capability you need to use only the overall standard deviation and now going to ppk ppk the formula is minimum of pp upper and pp lower what is pp upper pp lower we are breaking down the pp into two parts are breaking down the pp into two parts now we are going to monitor the process width compare the process width with the specification width in addition we are going to monitor the position of the process center from the specification limit if the process is centered properly the distance of the process center from the specification limit will be maximum and equal on both sides however if your process is shifted to the right or to the left the center will also be shifted if the process shift to the right center will approach the upper specification limit your pp upper will reduce now so pp upper 
getting reduced is an indication that your process is shifted to the right. Similarly, if process shift to the left, your PP lower will reduce. So whichever side, no, your uh, PP upper or PP lower reduces, no, that will actually pull down your capability. So you really have to use that portion of your PP, either PP upper or PP lower to calculate the capability. And that's why we have the, in the formula, minimum of PP upper and PP lower, right? And now again here for calculating the PP upper as well as PP lower, you have to use the overall standard deviation only. Now, and now as I already mentioned, when should you use the PP and PPK? Direct answer, your process, if it is in a state of statistical control, you calculate CPCPK. You calculate CPCPK if your process is in a state of statistical control. But if your process is not in statistical control, that point of time, you need to calculate only PP and PPK. Use the overall standard deviation, calculate the PP and PPK, and then start working backwards. Because PP, PPK is calculated accounting all the, you know, all the long-term variation, the special cause, the variation, you no know, due to the special causes. And now working backward in the sense, you slowly identify the special causes one by one and try to move, try to get every point inside the control limit. And then you can also, and then you can, uh, you can make your process statistically in control. If you get, if you get all the points inside the control limit by fixing all the special causes, your process will you know, come to a state called statistical control. And now you can switch to calculating CPCPK from PPPPK. Now this calculated CPCPK will be a realistic measure of short-term capability. But if your process is not in statistical control, you're not supposed to use CPCPK. At that point of time, if at all you wanted to know about the capability, you can use the overall standard deviation and calculate only the PPPPK and not the CPCPK. However, in my opinion, whether you want to calculate CPCPK or PPPPK, if you could bring your process to a state of statistical control and then you proceed with the capability analysis, that is always a great idea. But however, in the beginning stage of any process development, right, and there will be you no know, special causes, there will be a lot of variations. And so under such unavoidable scenario, you can start with measuring the PPPPK and then slowly you can achieve the statistical control and then you can switch to CPCPK. I think this video on PPPPK was helpful to you. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for my next video where I will be explaining you the calculations behind PP and PPK. I'm going to explain the different forms of standard deviation with a very simple example so that you will gain an absolute clarity on the difference between CP and CPK as well as PP and PPK. Thank you for watching this video.